Let's solve the Advent of Code 2021 Day 17 puzzle using the macOS calculator and Ivy. In this puzzle, we're launching a probe towards a target, and the probe starts out at a given x and y velocity. Its x velocity decreases by 1 at each step, eventually stopping at 0 so that it stops moving in the x direction. And its y velocity decreases by 1 at each step with no limit, since if it starts out going up, it needs to be able to fall back down. And the first puzzle asks us how high we can make the probe go up and still hit the target, um, which is typically below us. And we can consider the x and y coordinates separately, and I'm just going to assume that it's possible to arrange for the x velocity to zero out when the probe is somewhere near the target, somewhere in the target, so that the probe just stays at that x coordinate indefinitely. And then we can focus on the y coordinate. Now, these pictures of the trajectories in the problem are actually very helpful because we can notice that the up and down parts of the path are completely symmetrical. What goes up must come down, and in this problem, it comes down at exactly the reverse of the speed it went up. So if it goes up 2, and then 1, and then 0, and then comes back down 1, and then 2, and when it reaches the, the horizon where it started, it's going exactly the same speed it started out, and the next step it goes one more, 3. And so in the sample input, the target ends at minus 10, and that means that the, the fastest we could possibly be going and not miss the target completely would be to be going 10 for this step, which means to be going 9 the previous step, which means starting out at 9. And sure enough, in the sample, the right answer is 45, which is 9 times 10 over 2, which is the sum of what you get if you have 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 all the way up, and then the same thing um, comes back down. All right, so on the sample input, which is... Uh, negative 92 is the bottom. To do that, we can just use the same equation. So let's get the calculator up, and we'll say 91 times 92 divided by 2 is 4186. All right, that's one star. Now, in the second part, it asks us how many different velocity combinations we can use that will hit the target. And for that, we need a slightly better calculator. So we'll go back to Ivy. And so to start with, remember we said that we can do the X and the Y separately. At least we can compute where they go separately. So let's start by figuring out the Y position at each step for a given velocity. Let's say we start with velocity 9, like in the example. And the Y velocities are 9 plus 1 minus iota of 20. So we start out at 9, and the next step is 8, 7, 6, and so on. And if we want to see the positions, that's just the running sum of those. And sure enough, you know, the first negative one we get is the negative 10 because everything cancels out. And so we can build a table for lots of different velocities by using an outer product. Hmm. Uh, let's fix that. There we go. Make this a little wider. All right. So that's our, our different velocities for, or different positions for different velocities. You can see we have the row that we just did, but also some other ones. And so let's save that. M y pos of n will be a table of y positions for the maximum absolute velocity m over n time units. So we want to ha have positive velocities and negative velocities. So let's say we're going to do m minus iota 2 times m, outer product with iota n. So if we say, um, let's say 10 y pos 20, that gives us uh, positive velocity 8 through negative 11. So we're moving off by 1 there somewhere, but it doesn't really matter because we just want all the possible velocities. All right, so now we can do the same thing for x, and the only trick for x is that the velocities don't go down indefinitely. Instead, we need the monus operator instead of minus, which is x minus y, except if it's negative, it zeroes out. So we only preserve it if it's greater than 0. All right. So 5 minus iota 10, that's what we want. So now we can do the same thing we just did for y, m x pos n. Same thing equals the running sum of m, um, sorry, no, we don't need to go negative. So we can just say iota m outer minus iota n. And then we say 10 x pos 20. These are the different x positions we can get at various different velocities. And we can see that, you know, the velocity starts out at 9, it still slows down, and eventually we just bottom out at a certain position. All right, so now we have the x positions and the y positions at every time for every velocity, and the question is, how many different combinations hit the target? 
So let's define an in range operator. We'll say that x is in range r if r1 is less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal to r2. So we can say 10x plus 20, and then we can say that in range 20, 30. And we can see these are the, the velocities and time positions where we actually are in range. So that looks pretty good. So now we can take the two position tables and figure out which velocities are in range at which time units, and then use a matrix multiply to count all the matching combinations. So that'll be something like, we're counting positions, um, it's gonna be a sum over all the, the, um, the combinations that work of something x pos something in range something something and then a matrix multiply of booleans ors and ands and we're going to have to transpose because we want to line them up uh, the same way that they're facing and then something y pos something in range something something and so we just have to fill in all the somethings all right so the argument to count will say will be like the input which was up here this is the x x low x high y low y high so Let's see. Um, so for the velocity, so the, let's fill in the ranges here. Let's just do those first. And P1, P2, and here we have P3, 4. All right. So now for the velocities, we can stop worrying about X velocities if we've overshot the target in a single step. So the maximum we really need to consider is P of two, which is the, the farthest point on the X plus one. But since we know we have these funny off by ones, we'll just say plus 10, not worry about it. And then how many steps do we need? Well, if we're moving very slowly, um, actually, you know, the X is gonna die out early. So let's worry about Y. What's the maximum Y velocity we need? Well, when, we're going, when we come back going down negative, we're gonna wanna stay within the target. So if we're going farther than the target is in a single step, then again, we're in trouble. And so that would be the absolute value of P3. And again, we're gonna to have to add some slops. So we'll say plus 10. Um, so that's, that's the table. That's the maximum velocity we need for the Y. And now the question is how far do we have to go in that table? And again, um, if we're going P3 to start with, we have to go all the way up and then all the way back down. And that's gonna take that many steps. So it's something like two times abs P3. And again, we'll just add 10 for slop. All right, uh, and then we wanna have the same exact count in this table so that they line up well in the transposed matrix multiply. And I think that's it. So let's count the sample, 112. That is in fact correct. Uh, let's count the input. That might take a second or two. There we go, 2709. And we got our stars. Have a nice day.